Hello, welcome to the Math 135 video on why using L'Hopital's rule on the limit of sine x over x is sketchy. The intensity of this video is mild. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to justify when using L'Hopital's rule is inappropriate, and you should be able to organize math topics based on prerequisites. Our motivation for this is that once students learn L'Hopital's rule, they often use it too much, and often in inappropriate ways. What do we mean by inappropriate? We'll see that in a little bit. But maybe this quote will help to illustrate what we're talking about. Here's a quote from the philosopher Abraham Kaplan in 1964. He says, I call it the law of the instrument, and it may be formulated as follows. Give a small boy a hammer, and he will find that everything he encounters needs pounding. Now, does this sound like the way that you use L'Hopital's rule? Is every limit you see, you think, I should use L'Hopital's rule? Does this quote resonate with you? Also, did you know that Kaplan originally used this to talk about scientists? So let's look at what we mean by inappropriate use of L'Hopital's rule. Let's consider the limit as x goes to zero of x squared over x. How would you solve this limit if you had to? Well, let's look at how, you, how we could use L'Hopital's rule on it. Now to use L'Hopital's rule, we notice that this is a limit of the form zero over zero. So when we take the derivative, the derivative of the top is uh, 2x and the derivative of the bottom is just one. So this is really the limit of 2x, which is zero. So this is an example of using L'Hopital's rule on this limit. But of course, there are other ways to solve this limit, and in fact, much easier ways. So the preferred way is to use algebra. And what I mean here is cancel the x's first. So there's an x in both the numerator and denominator, cancel them. So this is really the limit of x, which is just zero. So here's our first observation. Sometimes L'Hopital's rule is overkill. L'Hopital's rule should be avoided when simple algebra will suffice. So if you can use simple algebra to solve your problem, you should prefer that. Let's look at another example that's an inappropriate use of L'Hopital's rule. Let's compute the limit as x goes to zero of sine x over x. If we were to use L'Hopital's rule, we notice that this is a limit of the form zero over zero. The derivative of the numerator is cosine, the derivative of the denominator is one, and then we can actually evaluate this, the numerator goes to one. Okay, so that's L'Hopital's rule. Now, what would be the preferred way to do this? Well, there's no simple algebra that we can do, but we've seen this limit before. So this is a limit that uses geometry, and here's a video that describes exactly what's going on. But you might think, oh, that video was, was kind of challenging. It used a lot of strange inequalities and geometry, but why is that not a legitimate thing to do? Why is that inappropriate? Well, let's think about what we're doing when we use L'Hopital's rule here. Well, we're taking the derivative of x and the derivative of sine. So in order to compute this, you need to know two things. You need to know the derivative of sine and the derivative of x. Now let's look at the derivative of sine. Do you remember how we established that? Well, let me remind you. When you're computing the derivative of sine x at zero, it uses the definition of the limit, sorry, the definition of the derivative, which looks like this, f of x minus f of zero over x minus zero, and the limit as x goes to zero. If we plug in sine here, what we end up with is sine x minus sine zero over x, which is really the limit as x goes to zero of sine x over x. So can you see the difficulty? Can you see the paradox here? If we're using L'Hopital's rule on this limit, then we need to know the derivative of sine. And in order to compute the derivative of sine, we need to know this limit. 
So at some point, to avoid going in circles, we need to actually establish this. And the way we do it is using geometry. So here's our second observation. L'Hopital's rule should be avoided when you are establishing limits used to compute derivatives, because here you need the limit as a prerequisite. Let's talk a little bit about prerequisites. So math is cumulative. It builds on itself. In this course, we learn things in this order. In the first couple of weeks, we learned about trig functions. Then we learned about limits of them. Then we learned about derivatives, and then we learned the L'Hopital's rule. In each case, they needed something before in order to learn it. So if we want to learn about limits, we need to know about those actual functions we're taking limits of. Derivatives are based on limits. The definition of the derivative uses a limit. And L'Hopital's rule is a special application of derivatives. So you can see that in each case, it looks backwards into simpler things. Everything builds on itself. Could we have instead learned it in this order? First trig functions, then L'Hopital's rule, then limits, then derivatives? Why or why not? Well, the issue here is that if we want to learn L'Hopital's rule first, we need to know what a derivative is. So it can't come before derivatives. We have to put L'Hopital's rule after derivatives. So that's partly why the limit sine x over x, we needed to use simple things like geometry in order to solve. This brings us to the idea of dependency. So math is primarily taught in order of dependency, where material and techniques are only introduced after their prerequisites. Here's an activity for you. Sort these topics into the order of dependency from prerequisite to application. So the identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one, Pythagoras's formula that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and the identity sine theta equals square root of one minus cos squared theta. Can you order these in terms of prerequisites and applications? Which would be the first thing you taught, then the second, then the third? Take a moment to sort these out. So of these three, the one that's most complicated, or the one that requires the most prerequisite knowledge, is this sine squared equals square root thing. And it's because we used the, the identity cos squared plus sine squared theta equals one to get that. And where did we get that? We got that from Pythagoras. So the order of prerequisites to applications, the dependency order is, first we can learn Pythagoras' formula, once we know that, we can learn this from the unit circle, and once we know that, we can rearrange to get this identity. Here are some other exercises for you. For each of these three limits, explain why it is not appropriate to use L'Hopital's rule on the limit. The limit as x goes to one of x squared minus one over x minus one. The limit as x goes to zero of cos x minus one over x. The limit as x goes to zero of log x over x. Here's a test question. Consider the limit as x goes to infinity, x cubed over x to the four plus x squared. Compute this limit using L'Hopital's rule exactly three times, exactly two times, and exactly one time. Here's a moment for you to reflect. What are some advantages to learning material that is taught in order of dependency? What are some drawbacks to learning material in, that is taught in order of dependency? And finally, are your courses taught in order of dependency or something else? Thank you very much and have a great day.